Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome back to the garden. Today we are taking a closer look at the fever few, more specifically how to grow the fever few. Um, now I grow fever few for cut flowers in my cut flower garden. Uh, so that's really what I'm gonna be focusing on here. In general, I tend to treat fever few as kind of like a hardy annual or biennial when I plant it. Um, I let it over winter and then the next spring to early summer I get some really gorgeous tall fever few plants that just bloom prolifically. However, it should be noted that these are technically a perennial so they should come back every year as long as they are cold tolerant to where you live. I really begin the process of growing fever few in here in my yard in the fall. However, I'm fairly certain you can start it in the spring and start it in the summer. It's very forgiving, at least in my own experience in terms of germination. So it really is up to you depending upon uh, when you want to start the seed. Um, so even though I'm not quite sure if they need it, what I like to do is I like to take the seed packet and put it in the fridge for about a week before I start sowing the seeds. Some seeds just do better from a period of cold stratification. I'm not quite sure if feverfew is one of those, but it is just kind of a thing I like to do just to make sure I have the best chance of success. You have a couple of options when it comes to sowing these seeds. Of course, you can start these seeds in a tray. Um, that's what I personally like to do. The seeds are very small and you know, you might have only a few seeds or tons of seeds, depending upon which variety you choose and purchase. Um, but I do like to start them in the tray. All I do is I just, you know, fill up a tray with potting soil and I lightly surface sow those seeds. I keep those at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I want to make sure that that potting soil maintains consistent moisture throughout the germination period. Uh, usually the seeds do germinate fairly quickly within about one to two weeks I will see some growth. At first they are teeny tiny but don't worry um, as soon as they are moved outside into the warm temperatures um, these plants will begin to produce their first true leaves and grow rather quickly. Here in my yard for a fall planting I usually begin sowing the seeds in September. September is a really good time and then by October, the beginning of October, usually about four weeks before my first frost date, those plants will be plenty big enough to transplant into the garden where they will remain all winter long and bloom the next season. I mentioned these plants are cold tolerant and hardy to frost. So as long as it's not too cold in your growing zone, you shouldn't have any problem with them overwintering without any kind of protection. If you are worried about it, obviously you can plant them in a hoop house or you can use row covers or frost blankets throughout the coldest portions of winter to really help those seedlings along. Uh, I find that anytime I make a fall planting of the fever few, anytime I do that, I usually have about a 95 to 98% survival rate of the plants. I usually don't have any problems with those plants dying back. Um, it's, of course, this will vary depending upon how harsh things are. And it will vary in your garden depending upon your own conditions. Everybody's garden is different and it really is a process of trial and error and finding out what works and what doesn't work for you where you live. Beyond planting, these really require very little care from me. Obviously when I plant them up, I put them in a weed-free bed that has lots of nice compost in it too. Um, in general, I don't fertilize these at all. However, again, I am growing these more as an annual rather than a perennial, I believe. If I was growing these as a perennial, I would definitely, you know, get some kind of routine adding fertilizer to these to make sure that the plants are getting what they need. But I can't specifically speak on that because I don't have experience with it. Overall, I think these are a great addition to the cut flower garden. Not only do they look great in flower arrangements, they last very, very long in the vase and they attract a ton of pollinators. I'm talking like so many pollinators, you're gonna love it. That's really about it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, as always, you can leave any questions or comments that you have down below. I'm always trying to answer those. Usually I get to them in about a week, um, sometimes longer depending upon how busy I am with work and you know the channel and everything. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'd absolutely love to have you. We are making new content all the time. Sometimes it's DIY projects, sometimes it's gardening. 
Um, could be even soap making. You really never know uh, quite what I'm going to upload. So if you like a little bit of a surprise, you might like this channel too. Always going to just keep on growing. Be sure to tell your friends, hit the little bell icon, all that good stuff. I hope that you guys are having such an amazing day. I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.